Hello, everybody out there in YouTube. We are the Middle Aged Guys coming back to you after a little bit of a layoff because real life happens. Uh, in this particular video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about hmm, probably, now nah, I got to say, probably our favorite game company currently right now is probably Nintendo. Okay. Uh, no surprise, but, you know, what do you expect? All right. Let me get the introductions out of the way. I'm the Reverend. The theme here. And I'm Gray Miles One. Uh, Nintendo as you know, uh, especially if you're somebody who's our age, uh, has been around for a long time. And yes, they do get away with uh, a lot of marketing based off nostalgia, okay? Uh, that, of course, was a huge uh, item of interest earlier this year with the NES Classic Mini. And that, of course, was another item of interest uh, just last week with the release of the Super Nintendo Classic Edition right here. Um, you know, not only that, but Metroid Samus Returns and the accompanying Amiibo, even with all of my bitching and moaning about that. Yes, I know. All right. Um, excuse me. Uh, okay. Um, you know, Nintendo obviously has a, a, a grasp of their back library and everything else. They also have a grasp. You know, it looks like they're learning a few lessons uh, about knowing what they have a hold of that will actually sell better. You know, uh, the NES, excuse me, the SNES Classic Edition uh, sold out nationwide when it released out on Friday. No big surprise. Everybody went ahead and they, they expected that. What I don't think a lot of people expected was the fact that there were a lot more physical units actually in stores on opening day than people initially expected. Uh, where the NES Classic Edition... Uh, it wasn't common to, to sit there and have the bigger stores only, like, receive a dozen or so. Uh, a lot of the bigger stores in, in a lot of areas um, were receiving more than 100 units of these things. Didn't keep them from flying off shelves within the first hour the doors opened, <laughs> but they received a lot more, okay? Now, for those who were really intrepid, they, took, they went out of their way and they cracked this thing open. They noticed that, hey, the board inside is exactly the same as the board that's inside the NES Classic Edition, all right? Which comes as no surprise, uh, considering that all the way back on September 12th, Nintendo themselves went ahead and they announced that they are going to be remarketing. They are going to be bringing, they're going to be bringing back the NES Classic Edition for an encore uh, sale, all right? Sometime in... I believe around March of 2018 or summer of 2018. Okay. Um, now, if you're somebody like ourselves, uh, that's actually some pretty good news. Um, you know, I, I, I think that's something to be happy about, especially if you're somebody who, I don't know, doesn't want to go ahead and spend like $400, $500. I mean, I've seen some ridiculous listings for the Super Nintendo Classic Edition all the way up to $5,000. What? On Craigslist. Yeah. Yeah, stupid, 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 ridiculous. All right, um, but you know what's funny is that a lot of the uh, a lot of the listings on eBay they've been steadily dropping in price. Like the first afternoon that they were up, they were like at four hundred dollars, but they've been steadily dropping down. Where I think the average right now for the SNES Classic Edition is something like one hundred and fifty bucks with room to negotiate for price. All right. Um, Guys, what do you think about the uh, the fact that Nintendo's got another hit on their hands with the SNES Classic Edition and the fact that obviously they've learned something because they're planning on bringing the NES Classic Edition back? Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> a hit? Duh. I, I mean, come on. That That's just... It's, it was more insulting when it was like, well, we didn't know that it was going to be <laughs> in demand like that. That was more insulting to me as a gamer than anything else, it, it, you know, especially if they saw and looked as to say that that everybody was like, oh, my God, we're so looking forward to this. Yep, yep. <laughs> what about you, Grimaus? What were your thoughts on all of that stuff or the newer news regarding a lot of that stuff? I'm just glad that um, the SNES Mini actually um, landed in gamers' hands Vice scalpers' hands. Oh, yeah. and it's going to stay that way because, due to the fact that one per customer rule, that looks like all the retailers are 
uh, holding, you know, holding to it. So hopefully when they do get more shipments in that uh, everybody will be able to have one or get one. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the thing is, is that with the NES classic edition, I think, what was it? They said overall it sold 2.3 million uh, consoles. That was worldwide. That was for like everybody in all of the territories. Yeah, that's um, not enough. Yeah, uh, for for the SNES Classic Edition, that's actually I think they shipped more than that, like the launch day. Uh, you know, than they did all of the the units shipped for the for the NES Classic Edition. Um, what I think happened was that either Reggie or the investors or a combination of Reggie and the investors went ahead and really sat down with the, with the folks at the Japanese uh, corporate office and said, you guys are fucking stupid. And we are, we are leaving money not on the table, but on the fucking floor. Okay. If we don't decide to go ahead and bring back this console, which, you know, Honestly speaking, probably the NES Classic Edition probably only costs them like 20 bucks to go ahead and manufacture. <laughs> the board is the same. All they need is the shells. You know, the fucking wiring and everything leading up to the con- uh, to the controllers themselves is, is probably really similar. And Make they were the like... controller cords longer. Well, yeah, that's the only thing that they're going to have to have to fix, all right? Um, but, you know, it really doesn't make sense that they go back to, to going ahead and, and manufacturing it because everything's the same. You know, it's, it's, it's not like, it's not like they're using completely different model board or anything. Everything plugs up the same. All right. So it's, it's pretty interesting that they're, they're actually able to do that. Um, I, this, and the fact that Metroid Samus returns came back really kind of proves that there's a lot of value in their back library and that people look. Here's the thing: if you're, if you're sitting there you're saying, "Well, you know, people are just nostalgic for it," um, to a point. But what you cannot deny is that these fucking things have good games on them. Okay, uh, which I really can't talk about. You know, considering other things that are on the horizon, no. like <laughs> the Atari box. <laughs> all right, but you know, that's another video. We covered that someplace else. Okay. Um, but you know, it seems like with this particular type of uh, product hitting the, the, sh- the store shelves and everything, um, everybody's kind of getting into it. Uh, thankfully a lot of the first party folks are getting into it. We know the flashbacks have been around for, for a long time. We know the Sega classic consoles have been around for a long time. Mm-hmm. Not, not that the build quality for them has, has ever been all that good, but they've been around for a long time. But you know, this has gotten to the point where, uh, even, uh, uh, they uh, they announce that there's going to be a mini Commodore 64 coming out in 2018. All right. Now I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, we were, I was lucky to be exposed to to gaming on the Commodore 64. Um, I guess lucky if you know after typing in the the script to go ahead and and launch a game on the five and a, and a quarter inch floppy. Uh, to know that I could go make myself a sandwich <laughs> and come back before it's actually finished uh, loading and shit like that. But, you know, um, yeah, I, I mean, I've actually experienced some of the games that have been on there. And the, the system was around for a long time. It it actually had quite a few quality games that were ported over to it. Um, what do you guys think? Is this just another fad? Is it something that you guys are interested in or... Or, <laughs> or is it just another curiosity that's following into this trend? Okay, look, the only way for this to work for me is if they release a whole library with it. But there's going to be licensing issues for sure. I, I think that's going to be a problem. But yeah. um, for those that played a Commodore before or never actually had one or they wanted to get one and did, or they just want to experience it, fine. It's a good idea. I heard that any freaking keyboard and mouse can actually hook up to this thing. Uh, it's you know what if they're using USB slots, yeah, I I think that would probably be possible. I because mean that would be that would be I mean come on, I mean, come on. But this thing better not be above forty dollars. Let's see here, right I now, I, right I, now. I mean, I think I'm even saying I'm giving that a stretch. Yeah, well, right now, from from what I'm looking at from the information that they've released, okay, 
Uh, the Commodore 64 Mini is a small replica of the console. It features an HDMI output, two <laughs> USB ports. All right. It Commodore supports an HDMI. Yeah, I know. That's like 120 pixels, 120p. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, HDMI output, two USB ports. It supports save states. Comes preloaded with a selection of games. All right. And it's got a full list of games that, that come listed on it, and which is actually a lot better than another fucking console we talked about uh, previously. Um, and, uh, and here's, yeah, and here's the kicker. Um, they say it's going to retail in around 70 bucks. Hmm. Which you know it's that which is the price of a brand new game, and I'm looking at their at the um, at their website. It looks like twenty thirty. Looks like it is loaded with thirty six games, or at least that's what they have com- confirmed right now. Okay, the only thing. All right, they better not have load times on this thing. <laughs> I well, hopefully they don't emulate that because no. that would suck shit. <laughs> no. I will yeah. get us in the thought of having it if that's the case. There's no way at this time where they should emulate that for nostalgic purposes. <laughs> Gray Mouse, what are your thoughts about the Commodore 64 Mini or Classic? So with the Commodore 64 games, you had to open up the game, look in the manual, to <laughs> type, get the code to type in to make the game run. <laughs> so, yeah, I hope they don't emulate that. <laughs> I, I hope well, that's the case too. I hope you got a keyboard and a mouse, and certain joysticks are going to work. I hope you could pick from a list. <gasps> yeah, <sighs> yeah. But, I mean, because <laughs> so you got to click on it, and then you got to click on it, and then you still got to fucking put in the command. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the fifth word on the twentieth line oh. of page nine of your instruction booklet. The instruction booklet will be a fucking bible at that point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, man. and you know damn well that games and gaming consoles and stuff like that do not come with manuals anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, hopefully, hopefully the folks who are putting this together, I believe it's uh, the company is Retro Games. Um, hopefully, <laughs> Retro Games Limited takes that in, you know, takes that in consideration. <laughs> you know, the grand thing is, is that it's really not hard to go ahead and like. Uh, Make that part of the UI, part of the launcher, and everything else, because the ROMs for the actual games themselves are minuscule. They used to fit on, you know, five and a quarter inch floppy disks. Right. So, and those were something like I don't know, thirty two K or something like that. I was about so, to say it's, it's sixty four kilobits. Yeah, yeah. Most of them were not even that big. So, <laughs> yeah. You know so, I mean, sixty four. Nope. It was called Commodore 64, but it wasn't 64 gigs. It no, was 64 yeah. bags, 64 kilobytes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow. It's not good. Can you? It's not going to get better than this. Well, you know oh. what's going to be very interesting. I'm going to. I'm interested in it. I wouldn't mind reading those text games again. Some of the it seems to me like some of those uh, text adventure games or some of the best games that you've played, at least growing up. I mean, you have the yeah. wall of text, and you got to read it, but you got to type in go right, go left, use what? sword, use shield. No, I'm not dying by dysentery again. <laughs> Fuck no. that, all right? Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't look like, uh, it doesn't look like Oregon Trail is part of the list here. This I'm looking at it right <laughs> No, 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 no. They're going to have to make a later list. That game has to be there. Yeah. Well, I know. I know. Oregon Trail is actually. I think it's public domain now, and you can actually there. Are, there are browser True. versions that you can that's find out there. Domain. So, yeah. yeah, that's public I'm domain. Playing now. it on your 4K TV. I can't even finish that. I, I how what trips me out is you said HDMI. <laughs> well, here's the TV stretch eight pixels. Wow. Yeah. Well, here's here's the a thing. Clear That's version a, of HD Commodore games <laughs> with pixels so sharp you can cut your eyeballs with them, pretty much. Yeah. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I mean, All right. Wait. The color the, palette. No, wait. Hang on. The color palette of the Commodore 64 is what? Four colors? Four <laughs> colors on screen. Yeah, I think so. Four or eight. 
Yeah, four or eight, something like that, you know. <laughs> but here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. All right. The funny thing is, is that with as many jokes as we can go ahead and we can throw out this thing, um, I'm more excited about this little piece of shit than I yeah. am the, the Atari box. And I, yeah. I, I, I hate to, you know, keep kicking sand on that thing. But, you know, if there's anybody out there who, who wants to understand our reasoning behind, like, why we get excited for, for certain things, with this, it has a list of games. Exactly. Right? You know, it, it <laughs> shows shit that it's like, hey, look, um, look, I, and, and I know in California Games is one of the games that are listed on here. I know the Commodore 64 version of California Games was, was better than the fucking NES, NES version. Yes, it was. All right? yes, <laughs> so, it was. <laughs> I mean, there there are things there are things for those for those gamers who remember that can be excited about. So this is actually gives us something like that. Okay, um, you know, but that's. <laughs> You're segueing away from the Nintendo stuff right into into the Commodore 64, but I think that's pretty cool. But you know, like I said, I, I think a lot of this marketing stuff, you know, for as for as much as people fault Nintendo for doing the same exact fucking thing every time, you know, again they're setting trends that other companies are following into the market once again. You know, yeah, once again, you know, but, by doing well, something just a little bit different. But was it the uh, the Genesis or uh, uh, Sega did Sega did the whole little Genesis with eighty games built into it? Yeah, that well, was. And then, they, and then, as the Reverend that. alluded to earlier, there has been Atari, um, freaking flashbacks. There's even the ColecoVision flashback. Yeah, yeah. But I think the, the just, just just didn't think this up. No, no, they they aren't they they aren't they aren't the ones who are originating the idea. No, okay, yeah, um, but I will say, but they are the they are the first first party, you know, actual manufacturers to sit there and say, hey, look, instead of have AT Games or At Games put out, you know, piece of shit hardware, all right, with bad emulation, mistimed emulation, and horrible sound output, okay, um, you know, to go ahead and, and, and host... 40 of our games and then 40 fucking Flash homebrew games that you find someplace else on the fucking net, all right? Um, you know, Nintendo went out of their way, and they were like, hey, these are games that were on our console That's that we're putting together, you know, solidly, first party, this is our shit. We're going to go ahead and we're going we're gonna to put it out. We're going to back it with warranty and everything, all right? And some good third-party games. Yeah, and, and some good third-party third games. Um, I think, you know, that it's it's interesting with, with how that goes. Um, but, yeah, it's... I, Again, I don't think here's the, here's the thing with the with the with the Atari flashbacks and the and the uh, the Sega Genesis uh, like the mini uh, consoles and stuff like that is that those have been put out like for for fucking years by anybody who's willing to go ahead and license the hardware out and everything, and they're sold for nothing. They're not meant to make any any sort of marketing waves. They're not meant to to make any sort of big profit except for whoever's licensing the stuff out because they're produced really cheap. All right. And they're sold for really cheap. And that's and why for the folks good. Yeah. And there, there's a reason why you find it in bed, bath and beyond and you don't find it in like GameStop or Best Buy, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it, it just makes sense that way. All right. I'm going to go to a bed, bath and beyond tomorrow and see if I can find this thing just because you said that. Uh, yeah, you probably can. You probably <laughs> find the Atari Flash back there. All right. Um, but yeah. Uh, so wait a minute, guys. Um, I got a real quick <laughs> question. When is it enough? Hmm. So when is the limit set? The Nintendo sixty four classic. I mean, because. The third, the first party companies, Nintendo or whatever, you know, what, they're gonna run this. Gonna get, is PlayStation gonna get smaller than this? They're gonna run. They're gonna run it into the ground. Yeah, it's called the PSP. <laughs> PSP can run those games. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but I mean, it's like, so, so what? What do we have next? We'll have a Saturn. A, a Saturn we'll Mini. We'll have a Saturn Mini. We'll have a, a Dreamcast Mini. Sign me up. If you do that shit, you do that shit correctly. Uh, look, You're just don't fucking kickstart it. Don't fucking kickstart it or or crowdfund. Forget that Sega. 
Wait, I hear that. It's Sega. So just but they did the fucking that, Genesis. Throw that idea. No, they did the fucking Genesis. If you no. do the fucking Saturn and if you do the fucking Dreamcast, mm-hmm. fuck, dude, sign me up for that. I don't think. <laughs> God damn it. If, if they did, I would be killer. Huh? <laughs> I said, Grave, I'm sure a hope killer. <laughs> no, I'm fucking yeah. around with you. But I, but look, Grey Mouse, I see your point. I, I, I do, because this is Sega, and they're like out, and they won't. But come on. They got to be looking at this. Who else is it looking at this is going, hmm? Well, it's obvious. I mean, Atari's looking at this going, hmm. No, yeah. Atari, fuck that Atari box. Look at the Commodore. <laughs> the Commodore's doing it right. They're releasing their shit with games. And they're at least at, they're at least announcing games. Yeah. And they're not asking for like close to three hundred dollars for the fucking thing. Uh, you know, and uh, they're they're producing and they're 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 producing and they're marketing it themselves instead of begging for funds on Indiegogo. Well, see the problem with it is that Saturn aren't their games kinda notoriously hard to to emulate? Yeah, yeah. And the thing is is that that's that's Dreamcast that's what they're Dreamcast hand. games are yeah. not. Dreamcast, yeah. on the other hand, is different, but Saturn. Good but luck all, what, but the thing about it is, if they're going to put certain games on there, then it won't be. It'll just be all right. It'll be past emulation at this point because certain games were arcade perfect. Yeah, I think, I think if, if, <laughs> if the trend continues the way it goes, thankfully, all of that stuff is possible. Unfortunately, whether or not it actually happens, yeah. Is something completely different altogether. I'll put okay. another Sega Saturn thing down here. I'll put another another Dreamcast thing down. I have two of each already. Fuck! If you give yeah, me yeah. fucking something like that with a certain library I mean, of games, shit. I mean, yeah. all you gotta all you gotta do is do a quick search on the internet now, and you'll see. You know, they're saying that the Nintendo sixty four mini. Well, yeah, because the hardware can can handle it. It's it's really easy. The hardware can handle it. So, no. I mean, you know what I mean? So, this I don't think this is going to stop anytime soon, but eventually it's going to hit a brick wall. And I, I just hope that it doesn't hit it hard. <laughs> you know well, I mean? well, look at how many Atari flashbacks there are. Well, I think I think the, the one thing for me personally is that I think they're a good way to go ahead and preserve timeless classic games for each and every console. Oh, okay. I agree with that. Granted, granted, with a lot of these consoles, the library is so big, you can't have enough games on it, okay? No. That's not going to stop modders from hacking the fuck out of it and dropping True. 900 titles into it anyways, True. because they're going to learn how to do that. Yeah. Um, but uh, one of the things that... Um, one of the things that's, uh, that, that we got to go ahead and, you know, that, that I especially, you know get kind of excited about is that, look, if there's a way that, especially when it comes to the disc-based systems, the GameCube, the Saturn, the, you know, the PlayStation, like, theme brought up, um, you know, the Dreamcast, look, I know those are all disc-based systems, and they've got moving parts, and all of that has a shelf life, okay? Mm -hmm. All of that stuff is going to break down sooner or later, Mm -hmm. all right? If you're going to ensure to me a way in the future that I can play some of the best games in perpetuity without having to worry about the moving parts in a solid state system. Mm-hmm. I'm all for that. Really? Okay. Just don't sit there be really, really vague about like what's actually included in the box. Okay. Don't sit there and try to market to me on real wood finish. Okay. <laughs> And you better come to me correct saying, hey, look, we're really serious about actually manufacturing this thing. We're going to put some real effort into it instead of begging for my shit on Indiegogo. Yeah. Maybe this is the way that the American Dreamcast Mini will incorporate the American Shinmu 2 on it. Quite possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any other thoughts that we have on this particular trend, guys, or anything else we want to go ahead and throw onto the pile? All I got to say is, Nintendo, if you're going to re- well, you are going to release the minis, the classic editions, come on. Stock the fucking shelves to the point where the stock is going up to heaven, because regardless of what you do, this thing is going to fly off the shelves. It will. I don't think these things are going to sit on shelves for, like, generations. You still have the freaking Switch. 
that are still flying off shelves. They're getting little stocks and they're just <laughs> so yeah. I don't think there's no way there's overstocking of these. I I don't think there's any way of that. Not anytime soon, anyway. Yeah, yeah. I really don't think there's a way that they could sit there and overextend uh, their their idea of how popular these these sort of things are, especially when it comes to their older established systems. You know, um, but really, even if they don't get that far, what I really want them to do is, you know, uh, DS player, please, 3DS player, please. A way to play DS and 3DS games on, on a larger screen. Please, all right. Yeah, you have the Super Game Boy. You have the Game Boy Player in for the GameCube. Yeah. Maybe the next classic will be the Super Game Boy. Would I have a Super Nintendo Mini Classic with the Super Game Boy Mini attachment to it that has Game Boy games and Game Boy Color games built into or, it already? Or if there's something they can go ahead and plug into one of those USB ports on the uh, on the Switch dock, you know. Just saying. All right. Oh. Um, <laughs> but with that, I think what we're going to do with this particular one before we uh, we run over time, uh, we're going to go ahead and close up right here, folks. Um, what are your thoughts? You really want to know. What are your thoughts on the fact that a lot of these mini systems are are coming into vogue? First party companies are re releasing a lot of this stuff. Is it just plain nostalgia? Are they trying to are they trying to market these things for suckers who are you know heart heartbroken or or have fond memories for that stuff. Yes, we know in large part they are. All right. Oh. But yeah. But is there is there a real upside? What are your thoughts on the fact that all of this stuff is coming back? You know, is Nintendo um, doing the right thing by doing all this? Are other companies doing the right thing by jumping into this sort of thing? You can let us know by leaving us a comment below. While you're at it, go ahead and mash on that like button. And if you really like what we're doing here and you want to see more, Hit subscribe and turn on those notifications so you know whenever we drop a new video out here on YouTube. We are the middle-aged guys, and all of our bullshit, well, we were talking about Nintendo for a moment, then we talked about the Commodore 64, then back to Nintendo and everybody else with mini consoles. And Yeah, this particular video, we're going to end it right here. <laughs> I'm the Reverend. The theme here. I'm Grey Mouse One. Once again, for the benefits of Common Sense Logic and mini console gaming everywhere now, is the Odyssey going to do this? I've already seen electronic football and electronic baseball. They brought those back. Just, yeah, just don't stop with this. Keep it going. Please. Yeah, and bring out more of these. And the uh, NES Classic and all that. Credits.